My name's Rob and I'm a licensed professional counselor. I've been using a technique with my patients that I thought may be helpful to others as I, it's been pretty successful so far, so far with the people that I've worked with. One thing to recognize is that in my experience as a counselor, I found that there really are no brand new ideas. They're just alternative ways of expressing old ideas. It has to do with the concept of suffering or feeling bad, experiencing a loss, like the loss of a loved one, a death, divorce, um, losing a pet, losing a job, anything that we have a really extreme emotional reaction to that provides a lot of discomfort over a long period of time. What I found is that most people at some point in their lives get the idea that suffering, emotional suffering, is an unnatural state that needs to be avoided at whatever cost. That leads in many cases to people turning to things like drugs and alcohol and un other unhealthy behavior that's designed to distract us from suffering. And I, I would say, I use this word infrequently, the word always, but I would say that's legitimate to say that that's always a mistake. Suffering is in fact a very real and very natural part of being human. What we aim to do here in um, helping you is try and reduce the intensity and the duration of suffering. And so how do you do that? Well, in a way, I'm gonna be asking you to embrace the suffering in a semi-controlled way. And it works like this. I call it budgeting suffering. I think that's an artifact of my first career being in business and finance and accounting. Um, I kind of carry that lingo into um, psychology. And by budgeting suffering, I mean planning out times and times during the day where you're going to allow yourself to really let the feelings of um, suffering, the feelings of loss, the pain, the anguish wash over you and just let it happen. Let me give you an example. You may decide that, okay, in the morning, I'm gonna get up at seven o'clock. At 7.15, I'm gonna make myself a cup of coffee and I'm gonna sit down by myself um, on the porch or at the kitchen table. And I'm gonna take 30 minutes just to feel sorry for myself, cry, rehash what's happened, and just really get into feeling the sensation of loss and grief. But after 30 minutes, I'm going to force myself to stop and I'm going to schedule another time during the day to let that happen. It may be that um, during my lunch at 1.15, I'm going to go someplace private and I'm going to go through that process again. And then in the evening at six o'clock, when I get home, I'm going to give myself another half an hour block um, to really feel those sensations. That's three times. In the beginning, you may need four times. You may 10 times. I don't know. It's, it, it's individual. But here's the trick. The trick is that that first time, and it's going to be tough the first time, is I do my 715 thing at 745. I stop myself and I say, I'm going to wait until 115 to bring myself back to this place. And every time those thoughts enter my mind and that grief starts to wash over me, I have an internal argument to say, stop, I'm not gonna do that now. I'm gonna focus on what's in front of me. I'm gonna do other things and thinking about other things because at one o'clock, I can, I, I can indulge myself in this. And in the beginning, you may have to argue with yourself frequently that whole first morning. That work, first morning at work may not be pretty pro very productive because you're arguing with yourself all morning. But that argument is, internal argument is vitally important. And as you do it, it'll get easier and easier. And you won't be avoiding suffering, you'll be embracing it, and you will not be letting it take over your life. You'll be managing it. And before you know it, you'll be released from the suffering and you'll be able to go on with your life. I really hope 
this helps somebody out there. I know it's helped me. This is something that I learned and I did with myself. I've suffered a number of losses in my life and I've used this technique. I know that it worked for me and I know that it worked for many of my clients and I sure hope it works for you. I hope you have a nice day.